Welcome to the unit number 2, Merchandising Mix, Assortments and Vocabulary. In this unit, you will understand the concept of Merchandising Mix. This unit comprises of two modules, a final review section that invites you to reflect on what you have learnt. By the end of this unit, Students will be able to understand the concept of merchandising mix, understand the merchandise assortment and its types, outline of the four hours of merchandising and their significance, understand the important terms of merchandising that is vocabulary. The module gives an overview about the concept of merchandising mix. A merchandising mix is the breadth and depth of products carried by the retailer. It also known as product assortment. Retail merchandising is the process used in order to conduct retail sales. As part of the process, the merchandiser pays close attention to the types of products offered for sale, how to best the present those products to the consumers and determining what a reasonable retail price is for each unit sold. The product assortment is the core of retail merchandising. A retailer's total product offering is called a merchandise mix or product range. Let us review a few basic elements of merchandising mix. The lowest level of detail Identifying a product in the retailer's assortment is the stock keeping unit SKU which identifies a particular item. For example, a pair of pants of a certain brand in a particular style, color and size is one SKU. The number of SKUs at various retailers varies tremendously while hard discounters often carry less than 1000 SKUs. A typical hypermarket assortment accumulates to around 100,000 SKUs. Product breadth is the number of different styles of product lines offered by the retailer. It also known as product assortment width or merchandise breadth. Product depth is the variety in each item or particular style of a product. It is the number of choices available with respect to colors, fabrics, fabric designs and sizes. It is also known as product or merchandise assortment. Merchandise mix is made up of all the products that a business sells. A product line is a group of closely related products that a business sells. A product item or the products that make up a product line. Business must pay close attention to their target market and must obtain, develop and maintain and continually improve upon their merchandise mix. This is the merchandise hierarchy. At the lowest level or lowest end is the SKU. Next is the style price point. This is followed by merchandise subcategory, merchandise category, merchandise classification and then the department finally the company. Planning and controlling the merchandise mix of a retail store is the crux and the entire blueprint for the effective 
and efficient management of retail store. The most fascinating thing about merchandise mix is the combination of art and science. Only after the successful amalgamation of these two ingredients, it is possible to successfully operate the store. There are no rules as to what should be included and what should be excluded in the merchandise and hence this calls for customer orientation, knowing the customer likes and dislikes, preferences, tastes and the managerial skills to handle this. The most widely used management technique is category management. Each product is managed as a business unit at store level. The merchandise mix should be organized as to the number of different product lines carried. A decision on the mix must include brands, sizes, colors, material, styles and price points. The goal is to ensure that product choice meets targeted market needs. It is important to carefully plan the number of units to have on hand to meet the expected sales for the brand, size, color combinations, etc. The product life cycle is one of the important categorization criteria. Merchandise is of different kinds. Let us review some of them. Staple merchandise. It consists of those elements and products that are carried permanently by the retailer and that have relatively stable sales over time. A hammer or a paintbrush at a DIY retailer or jeans and white t-shirts at a department store would be examples of staple goods. Then passion merchandise. It refers to products that have cyclical sales due to changing tastes and life cycles. Colors and cuts of clothing change and merchandise offered this year usually out of date next year. Seasonal merchandise. It consists of products that do not sell equally well over consecutive time periods. Barbecue grills, skiing equipment, short pants and similar products have very high sales during one season of the year but are not sold at all in other seasons. Fad merchandise. It generates very high sales for a short period. Often toys and games, certain clothing accessories or certain music CDs or fads. Tamagotchis and Pokemon uh, for instance were classic fads. Movie merchandise example Batman accessories also constitute typical fads. Price sensitivity is often very low and ensuring supply while demand is high is crucial for the success. The product life cycle of merchandise is also important because it emphasizes that all products in the assortment need to be placed after a varying period of time. Another management method is ABC analysis where each product is rank ordered based on the performance levels. Hence category management has developed a stepwise planning process for categories and was first proposed by the consulting company the partnering group in mid 90s. The last decade it has developed into a standard industry process. The basic merchandise mix strategies involves development, expansion, modification and deletion. Development. Develop new products to bolster the company's image or to expand market share. Then expansion. Businesses can choose to add either new product items or new product lines. Modification. Altering a company's existing product. Then Finally, deletion. This may occur when a product is no longer useful, obsolete or 
not fashionable or room is needed for another product the average store size has increased continuously over the last decades giving retailers more space to enter new categories many product categories have stagnated making a move into new fields attractive and some retailers wish to exploit their high customer frequency by selling new product ranges this is the reason why an increasing number of retailers use a combination of specialist and generalist approaches within their product offer they are specialist in one or few categories but add other categories in which they only offer a shallow assortment temporarily or permanently retailers diversify by adding new products to their assortment which do not belong to their traditional merchandise let us now move on to four hours of merchandising fashion merchandising is the process of planning buying and selling fashion apparel and accessories in order to offer right merchandise blend to meet the demands of target markets fashion merchandising is the function of planning to fulfill customers requirement with the right merchandise with right price at right time in right place to put it simply fashion merchandising is the art and science of making right product with the right price available at right place in right time so the four r's are one right product two right price three right time and four the right place these are known as four r's of merchandising a successful retail operation requires a merchandise assortment of the right type in the right place and at the right price to accomplish this objective activities such as profit and loss sales inventory purchases markups markdowns and expenses must be planned at least 6 months in advance by the buyers and managers this module looks at the various assortments of merchandise merchandise assortment is a complete range of merchandise in a category planned to various depths of inventory to meet customer demand merchandise assortment planning is done to determine how many separate items should be bought and in what quantities the goal of merchandise assortment planning is to ensure that product choice meets targeted customer needs merchandise or buyer must carefully plan the number of units to have on hand to meet the expected sales per the brand size and color combination the lists of merchandise to be developed are basic stock list that is staple goods model stock list fashion items never out list key items and best sellers merchandise assortment plan requires continuous monitoring and adjusting the types of product lines that are needed and dropped from the merchandise mix two widely used methods to control assortment and support or inventory turnover and open to buy inventory turnover is the rate at which the retailer depletes and replenishes the stock open to buy is the amount of new merchandise a retailer can buy during a specific time period without exceeding planned purchase per the period to run a successful retail outlet the retailer must find an optimum balance between the two dimensions of the merchandise assortment in their merchandise mix the two merchandise assortment dimensions of merchandise mix are breadth and depth breadth of the merchandise is the number of different styles available in a category for example men's shirt we can have half sleeves full sleeve different color types 
double pocket, single pocket and different handcuffs in full sleeve type. So, these are the different types possible in a men's shirt. Depth is the variety available in each style of the product category. For example, in a half sleeve shirt, how many different colors, fabric designs like stripes, checks, sizes are available. Retail stores may follow narrow and deep assortments or broad and shallow assortments. Narrow and deep assortments are generally found in specialty stores and they focus on specific category or subcategory, but keep lot of variety. For example, trouser town store focuses on trousers only, but keeps lot of variety in trousers. Broad or wide and shallow assortments generally follow by the department stores. For example, stores like lifestyle, etc. The other types are not very popular with the stores. They are narrow and shallow assortments and wide and deep assortments. The advantages of narrow and shallow merchandise assortments are, they are aimed at convenience customers, they are least costly and are high turnover items. The disadvantages of these are, they have little width and depth, there is no one stop shopping, there could be some disappointed customers. They have a weak image and have limited customer loyalty. They have a small trading area. The advantages of wide and shallow assortments are they have a broad market, have a high level of customer traffic. The emphasis is on convenience to the customers. They are less costly than wide and deep and it is one step shopping. The disadvantages of these are they have low variety within the product line. There could be some disappointed customers. They have a weak image. Items stocked are many with low turnover. There is a reduced customer loyalty. The advantages of narrow and deep merchandise are they have specialist image. There is a good customer choice in various categories. Specialized personnel are available. There is a increased customer loyalty. There are no disappointed customers. They are less costly than wide and deep. The disadvantages of these are, there is too much emphasis on one category. There is no one stop shopping. There is more susceptible to trends and cycles. Greater effort is needed to enlarge the size of trading area. The advantages of wide and deep merchandise are, it is a broad market, full selection of items available, it has a high level of customer traffic, uh, customer loyalty is more here, there is one stop shopping, there are no disappointed customers. At the same time, the disadvantages of these are, there are high investment in inventory, it has a general image, many items with low turnover are stocked there could be some obsolete merchandise. You have come to the end of this unit. As with many other facets of retail management, merchandising is becoming strategic, more strategic and more fact-based because retail information systems provide the necessary data for analyzing the effects of merchandise changes. Some trends have emerged in last few years. These include Retailers are increasingly adding new categories to their merchandise. It is category migration. Retailers are reducing the depth of their assortments in each category, focusing on leading brands and eliminating underperforming manufacturer brands. Retailers are increasingly adding store brands to their assortment and store brand portfolios cover all the segments, including the premium segment. In many cases, merchandising planning is integrated into category management process, which supports strategic retail positioning. This is done by 
assigning defined roles to a category and systematically deriving the subsequent marketing decisions from the role the merchandising process is determined by the retailers most valuable and limited resource that is the self space thank you